So I messed up big time last week, and before I get into that, I need to, you know, give you kind of information so that you could understand kind of where I messed up and how I kind of messed up. So generally, most of the time when I shoot cinematic, you know, kind of short pieces, they tend to either be a shot in 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second on my camera. With that in mind, I throw that clip onto a 24 frames per second timeline, and with it, it stretches out the clip, and by doing so, it adds that nice little slow motion effect with that buttery smooth kind of feel to it. Along with that, in order to make it feel natural, um, you add this thing called the 180 degree shutter rule. Now with that in mind, uh, essentially it follows a certain formula. I'm not going to get too much into the science behind it, but just the general formula is, you know, one over the double your frames per second. So if I was shooting, you know, at 60 frames per second, my shutter for the video should be one over 1 20th. But the closest thing, you know, on my camera is one over 1 25. So that's close enough and that gets the job done. Essentially, if you see my hand moving right here, um, you could see there's like this natural kind of looking motion blur with it. Uh, there's a lot more involved with it, and if you want to, you know, hear more about it, make sure to comment down below and I'll make another video on it. But essentially, that's all pretty much all the information you need to know before you watch this clip. And then comment down below if you know what frame rate and if you can guess what frames per second this video was shot in. So let's cue that clip. you guys get it right do you think well what if I told you I completely messed up and shot that at 1 over 250th of a second uh, for the shutter speed and 30 frames per second I completely messed up I did not follow any of the rules and it does not look that good straight out of the camera like the way that I originally shot it I had to do some tweaking and that's what I want to talk about today, where DaVinci Resolve literally saved my butt in regards to, you know, this whole mess of a shot that I made for myself. So let's cue this intro and then get right into it in DaVinci Resolve. Alright, so let's open up DaVinci Resolve right now and get this squared away. So I got DaVinci Resolve open and although I don't have the same clips that I had last weekend, because um, they're all down in San Diego, I try to replicate them with, you know, a new clip that I took of the cat that lives at my parents' house. The shutter speed goes against, you know, the 180 degree second rule, whatever it's called, um, at, you know, 1 over 125. Um, along with the frames per second, which is at 30 frames per second. So those things don't match, you know, to satisfy that rule. And with it, we get a clip that looks kind of like this. It just looks really jittery and just doesn't really work. Um, if we were, you know, to throw this in slow motion, let's put it at 23. It's not going to be, you know, slow enough to even, you know, run. It's still going to be relatively fast. It just doesn't really work the way that we wanted it to. It doesn't have that nice slow motion that we were intending with that original shot. So let me just fix this and throw this back at 30 frames per second. And I'll show you kind of what I did to fix this. And it took, you know, a decent amount of research online just trying to figure out is there any way I could salvage my you know video clips and all that and the one thing I found was this you know awesome thing where you could actually you know salvage this horrible clip so the first thing we want to do is step one change the clip speed 
to 50%, which was a kind of around what we were looking to do before. Then make sure to click the ripple sequence. So now we got that. Now when we play it back, it looks, you know, a lot slower. It looks, you know, around the speed that we wanted it to be originally. But it still looks really jittery, just not the way we want it exactly. So there's, you know, additional things we could do, which is, you know, up to step two, which is being able to, you know, edit these settings in retime and scaling, which is in this video tab here. We scroll to the bottom. And first we're gonna change this retime process from pro project settings to optical flow. Now this thing is a game changer. Um, in addition to optical flow, we want to also edit this motion estimation. Um, you just kind of have to play with this second setting, but you know, for me, for the most part, either you know standard faster, standard better, you know, tended to work better. Enhanced faster was all right, but then enhanced better was you know just kind of off a little bit. So I'm gonna start off, you know, with like let's try standard better, see how this works and then we're going to play this back. Let's see how this looks. As you can see, it's really, really smooth. It's a lot smoother than what it was before. Um, let's just play it back again just to double check. As you can see, you know, it's, it's you know, a pretty big difference. Let's try, you know, standard faster, see if that works a little bit better between the two. And don't mind the shakiness, that's all different. That has to do with, you know, stabilization and all that. So I think standard better looked a little bit better. And then, you know, just a bonus tip we could add for this whole thing, just to, you know, make it smoother um, with the whole kind of video thing. I, I was hand holding it, so with, you know, a telephoto lens, so definitely not the best way to have the most stable footage. But what we could do is this bonus tip, which is go to stabilization, and then let's increase that smooth to around 75. This one you also want to play with perspective, you know, is the one you start with. And then if that one doesn't work, you slowly move your way down from translation and similarity. And I'll show it to you if this one doesn't work. But as you can kind of see, it crops in to try and get like, you know, a more stable image. Let's see if it gets it smoother this time around. And yeah, kind of like, you know, the first go looks pretty good. Um, there is a little bit of a wobble, so let's try similarity. Uh, maybe this one will help a little bit better. And it's loading. That's what I love about DaVinci Resolve. It's so fast. Um, you will notice, you know, there is quite a bit of crop, but, you know, it helps make it stable. So you can see right there, a lot smoother. Um, let's see if we can get the cropping ratio out a little bit more. And there we go. Yeah, that's a lot smoother. It's just cropped in. Again, the stabilization is not necessary, but you know, just to even get it in this slow motion state is a game changer. Again, here we can look at you know the retime scaling before and after. So this is before. It just looks super choppy, not smooth at all. As soon as we throw in retime and scaling everything is a lot smoother you get you know that nice kind of fluid look with it and that's pretty much it for today's video hopefully this video helps you out just like how it helped me out um, if it did make sure to press that like button down below subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on future tips and tutorials videos and more adventures that we go on this channel and then, you know, comment down below, you know, if this helped you at all and if you could, you know, share it with a friend. So, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Uh, yeah, it's so weird not being in my own studio to do this. But thank you guys for watching and subscribe if you haven't already. Helps me out. Thanks.